Number 8. The activities of the NKVD were an open secret. The secret police went by numerous different names over the course of the Soviet Union's 69 years of existence, but from 1934 until Stalin's death in 1953, they were known as the NKVD. Above the law, and separate from the party, the NKVD answered to Stalin alone. It was the instrument through which Stalin inflicted terror on a population of more than 170 million, and one of the main pillars on which his power rested. An entirely rational fear of the secret police permeated all levels of Soviet society. Any man elevated to head of the NKVD wielded power second only to that of Stalin. This meant their position was a dangerous one. The first chief of the NKVD, Genrik Yagoda, was himself arrested tortured and executed on Stalin's orders. His successor, Nikolai Yezhov, nicknamed the Poison Dwarf due to his short stature, suffered the same fate. Number 7. Stalin's right-hand man was a sadist and a serial killer. Only an individual of exceptional cruelty and cunning could hope to survive for any great length of time as the chief of Stalin's NKVD. The unassuming-looking Lavrently Beria was just such a man. Described by Stalin's daughter as an evil genius who surpassed even her father in the dark political arts, Beria was perhaps the most depraved of all of Stalin's creatures. Appointed as the chief of the NKVD in place of Nikolai Yezhov, Beria was a sycophantic crawler who did everything in his power to ingratiate himself with Stalin, the man he called the boss. He was also a man who thoroughly enjoyed his job. Reported to be capable of going days on end without sleep, he delighted in presiding over marathon torture sessions. When Beria wasn't killing in his professional capacity as Stalin's attack dog, he did so for his own amusement. His henchmen were under the instruction to roam the streets, seeking out young women and girls for him to rape and murder. There's little doubt that Stalin must have been aware of Beria's activities, but the Soviet dictator prized loyalty and efficiency over all else and cared nothing for the suffering of others. Beria's loyalty, however, was not as complete as Stalin imagined. When Stalin died in 1953, Beria spat on his corpse and smiled. Most likely, he believed that he would replace his former master as dictator, but with Stalin's protection lost, he was instead arrested and sentenced to death for his many crimes. Beria, the merciless killer, broke down in tears and pleaded for his life. His screams were muffled by a rag stuffed in his mouth before he was shot in the head.